Did you just have a pandemic graduation? Hello again, everyone. I'm Eli's dad with Project Eli, where we educate, lead, and inspire. And yes, if you just graduated, you say, hey, Eli's dad, I'm already educated. Okay, well, it's time to wake up and see what you don't know, my friends. And the reason why we're having this, we're going to have a, a discussion today is going to concern what do you do now? Okay, you just graduated, you went to the ceremony, or you didn't go to the ceremony, you, you, you went to a virtual ceremony, you had your cap and gone, you threw your cap up in the air, and then you said, what do I do now? What do I do now? Now, here's what happens with most people, and this is true even with, you know, and when, when it wasn't 2020, I mean, it, it's, it's 2020, we're having a pandemic, but your 2020 vision for the future is certainly a little bit different. Circumstances are a little bit different than they were for people in years past, even last year. So let's talk about what your new 2020 vision should be, how to go about it, and let's see if we can't get you working. All right? Now, yeah, you just graduated, so you want to have a little downtime. All right, what does that mean? Well... You're at home, you're playing video games, you're at mom and dad's house, blah, 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 all right? Pretty soon, you know, they're glad to see you, haven't seen you for a while, glad to see you. Uh, guess what? That ain't going to last all that long. Pretty soon, you're going to be itching, they're going to be itching. You're going to need a lot of power, because everyone, powder, because everyone's going to be itching for you to get to work, for you to get a job, for you to get moving, for you to go to the next level. So... Let's talk about that. What is your plan? You know, now up until this point, most people could, you know, before they graduate, live their lives kind of like it's an accident. You wake up, you go to the social media, you turn on the TV, or you or you decide what mood you're going to be in. You know, you, you know, today I'm not going to be in a good mood. Today I'm going to be ticked off, or today I'm going to be worrying about what Joey said on on Facebook. You can't live life like that now. We've just graduated. It's time to move to the next level. Moving to the next level means stop living your life like it's an accident. You've got to plan it out. One of the things that we talk about planning out is having a vision for yourself. What do you ultimately want to be? Doesn't mean you got, and this is a mistake a lot of people make. They think like, oh, I just take a pill and I'm, I'm healthy. I, you know, I don't have to have heart surgery now. I took one pill, I'm done. Well, the wonderful world of employment isn't like that. So you have you start, for the most part, uh, at ground zero, and you have to work your way up. But the first thing is, have some sort of a ultimate vision of what it is that you want, what it is you want to do. And in that vision, make sure that in addition to you being served, in other words, of course, your own airplane, your own island, uh, your beautiful spouse, children, uh, you know, you're wealthy beyond your means, you know, winters in, in Colorado and summer, it, okay, yeah, I get it, all right, so that's serving you. Let's talk about serving others, having a greater purpose. What is it you can do to serve other people? Now, where is the, where is the vision in 2020 different than it has been in past years. It's difficult enough because what I always used to say is people go, they throw their cap in the air, they go home, they play video games, and then they go, now what am I going to do? All right, And then you end up scouring the newspaper for an entry-level position because yes, the college education, not like it was 30 or 40 years ago, doesn't entitle you to virtually anything. There's a lot of college graduates out there. That's number one. Number two, the key thing is, in addition to all the graduates that you're competing with, present circumstances are saying, we've got 30 or so million other people out there that aren't working. Now one of the advantages you have, as I heard on TV, and I'm, I'm not terribly shocked by this, but I'm surprised by it, 
is that a lot of people are saying, well, you know, I still have several more weeks left to go on my unemployment. Before I go back to work, I think I'm going to drag this out, okay? And so that's what people do. All right, so that's one advantage you have. Now, here's the other thing. Figure out what you want to do and be more concerned with what your potential is than what your immediate payback is going to be. Right? That's a mistake a lot of people make. When, you, when they go in for a job interview, the person that's, you know, doing the interviewing, the, the gatekeeper before they send you to, like, the person that does the actual hiring, but the screener, say, so tell me, what kind of uh, salary are you looking for? The person that's in control is the person that's asking the question. So if they say, what salary are you looking for, and you give them an answer, they are the ones in control. You want to be the one in control. So when someone says to you, so, what salary, you know, what's your minimum salary that you're looking for? Say, well, you know what, I'm a lot more interested in potential than I am in salary right this very minute. I want to get my foot in the door, I want to get started, but I want to get started where I can see light at the end of the tunnel that'll get me to my specific goal, and if you want to say what that goal is, especially make sure it's related to what you see on the company's website so that you can be congruent with them, but be sincere, all right? You don't want to be phony here because you don't want to end up getting a job where 40 hours a week or more, you're saying, boy, I wish I wasn't here. You want to get something that, you know, is taking you to the next level so you can see it as a stepping stone and not as busy work. Does that make sense? All right, so you want to serve people, you want to have something, and that's your ultimate vision is, is, is you're being served, but also, uh, you're serving people because that gives you a motivation to keep going. I'm serving people, I'm helping people, I'm making people better, that type of thing. So have that vision in your mind also, all right? And then, once again, be focused on the long-term aspects, understanding that you can't go one step and boom, you're there. It doesn't work that way, that you're going to have to work your way up. Look for a situation where you can work your way up in something that you want to do. Be willing to work for next to nothing. You know, if they say, well, we can't pay you very much, and, you know, well, gee, you know, I'm looking for the experience, what I can learn, that's certainly going to be payment for me, and if I do a really good job, you're certainly going to want to keep me, and then you want to, you're going to want to compensate me in the manner that I desire and deserve, so that I can serve you in the manner that you desire and deserve. Isn't that right? Wow. Okay, so you're serving both people, but you've got to get your foot in the door, and you have to be motivated you know, for that end result. Remember the words of Zig Ziglar. And you can look Zig up on, uh, on YouTube. He's all over YouTube. Fantastic speaker. The number one quote I would say that Zig Ziglar is quoted for is, if you help enough other people get what they want, you will get what you want. And because we will never end a meeting on a philosophical note. Let's get out there, let's hit the newspaper, let's find something, let's start interviewing. A lot of people are taking time off, so let's get out there and charge! I'm Eli's dad.